you got to let him stay out there. I mean, I, I don't unless Edwin tells you he is completely gassed and cannot even walk out on the mound. I mean, there, there shouldn't even be a decision on this. Pitch is high. Runner goes. Throw down. Got him. He got him at second base. Edwin Jackson gets a little bit of help from his battery mate. Edwin Jackson to the mound here in St. Petersburg, Florida, looking for baseball and Diamondbacks history. The 0-2 pitch from Jackson. Got him looking. Two outs away. One out away from a no-hitter here in Tampa. The 0-2 pitch. Fastball, ground ball, middle of the diamond. Stephen Drew fields, fires. He did it! Edwin Jackson yes. just threw the second no-hitter in Diamondbacks history. He is mobbed by his teammates on the mound. To even be able to go ahead and just have a chance to finish a no-hitter was, uh, was big for me uh, right now, just absorbing it in. That was in 2010 for Edwin Jackson. That is an unconventional, it's fair to say, right? Unconventional no-hitter. 149 pitches. That's not done anymore. Now, eight walks, but a one nothing win. That's tense over the Rays. And Jake Anthony, I was mentioning, that's a real Rays club. Ben Zobrist, our own Carlos Pena, B.J. Upton, Evan Longoria. That was oh, a good yeah. club. That team can break. Out. I mean, they they made some they did some damage. Uh, Edwin Jackson joins us now. Edwin, Brian, Kenny here with the fellas. Tell us about what do you remember about that game? That's a, that's a nice one nothing win against a very good team. What sticks out to you? What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? Uh, first of all, honored to be here with y'all, man. Great group of guys. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing that stuck out with me uh, is what happens when you don't have it all on the mound um, as a pitcher. It's not every day we're going out there 100, percent and sometimes you just have to dig in a little bit. Find a way, you know, and that was a great example of finding a way the whole game. Uh, I talked with Duntrell. I was just laughing with Duntrell Willis, um, telling him we talked the whole game. He talked me through the whole game. Uh, I was like, man, Trell, I don't have fastball. He's like, but you got a slider. Keep using it until the fastball come around. And uh, lo and behold, six inning, I found some fastball command and uh, there was some good defense behind me and a couple key plays. I was able to finish uh, what well, we were able as a team to, you know, complete the no hitter. Yeah, I guess as a team, right, eight walks, right, but it's a one nothing game, which is a different animal against that club, right? That, tell me about, like, how special was it to throw a no-hitter at that point? Man, uh, you know what? It, it was dope for me to be able to get through the game, period. Uh, I think it was the third, third or fourth inning. I walked bases loaded. <laughs> Had to take a step back, like, man, you know, bullpen is working the whole game. Um, you know, those dudes down there tired. And if you're in the bullpen, you know, that's that's a lot of warming up. That's a lot of sitting down, getting up, <laughs> and sitting down, getting up. So I feel like about five different people warmed up throughout the game. So I was like, I better finish it. You know, I better finish it. <laughs> I can't get this far having dudes warming up our game and then don't finish it. But uh, all in all, I feel like it was meant to be, man. It was just something you can't control, you know, if you finish no hit or not. So I kind of took a step back and just left it all in the man and upstairs and, you know, just took a deep breath and said, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. And that was my approach. And I guess it was meant to be because it happened. <laughs> it did happen, EJ. It's Peeve. Look, I love when you were on the other side going out there with Tampa, and I'll never forget when I heard Kanye, wait till I get my money right, can't tell me nothing. Those are my favorite memories. But, look, in that game with Arizona against Tampa Bay, incredible Tampa Bay team that BK just mentioned, you threw 149 pitches. Talk to me about pitch count these days. I, I, I know it, it would, that would be unheard of. It's still unheard of. But throwing 150 pitches in a game, how did you feel the rest of the season, and what's your thought on pitch counts these days? You know what, Peeve? Um, this was a different time with baseball, man. Uh, this was a was a time where you had old school managers that kind of they they dictated the, the pitch count didn't dictate the game. You know, it was kind of a feel and how the players are going. You know, as well as I do, we got eighty pitches. We're not coming out of a game. Like we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get into some words with the manager pulling us out of a game, especially if it's a close game. Um, I feel like fifty pitches. I might just be getting warmed up. And honestly, I didn't know how many pitches I had. Um, I was just throwing. I was just I was just finding that adrenaline and riding a wave with it. Uh, I didn't know till after the game I had one hundred and forty nine pitches. Um, so I never cared about pitch count. Um, pitch count never bothered me as well. I didn't get tired. I trained hard and I worked for it. Uh, you know, it was a marathon and I, I prepared for marathons in my offseason training. But the way it is today, that would have been two games. You know, that's two starts almost <laughs> in one game. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have been in today's baseball, no chance that I'm making that, I'm making that, uh, I'm finishing that no hitter. Edwin, I, look, getting to play against you a little bit like I did, uh, absolutely distinguished career. Loved watching you go out there and do your work every time you went out there. 
Uh, I mean, obviously, this moment, I'm sure, stands out to you within the course of your career. Uh, tell me a little bit more because, uh, you know, about the biggest moments of your career and, and, and what stands out to you, because I'm sure you've had a couple of years now to reflect on it and really look back on what was, like I said, an, an awesome, awesome career. Uh, that's an interesting point there, Brian. Uh, as I as I sit back and reflect, there are my career changes as, as times of importance. Uh, you know, starts out with my my debut, making on my twentieth birthday, having my family around. Then I uh, make an All Star game. You know, then I throw a no hitter, and then I was able to win a World Series. But uh, towards the end of my career, I would say having my family there um, for to witness my 100th win was, for me, the biggest game of my career because it was something that I got to uh, celebrate with my family in totality, where I could have all of us on the field, even if the kids don't all remember it. Uh, we can look back at those pictures and we can share that memory together forever. You know, having something complete as a family or having me um, complete complete a feat as a, and have my family there, my immediate family there to witness it. So that's the one that resonates with me right now to, to um, have them around and witness that game with uh, Oakland. You know, if, if fans don't know, you played for 14 teams. That's the record. The all-time record. I don't, maybe in the 1870s, guys did a little bit more, Edwin. That's about it. So you tell us, like, what, what comes out of that journey that like maybe a guy who stays in one spot doesn't get? Um, I think it shows who I am as a person. Um, it's, it's, I have, I'm a team player. I'm personable. I'm able to make adjustments from wherever system I go to. And I think the biggest thing that uh, I take from all 14 of those teams, win, lose, or draw, I never lost respect as a player. You know, I could go, I had a year with the Cubs where I lost 18 games right after signing a four-year deal. But I never lost the clubhouse, who I was as a person. I was losing on the field quite often, but internally, everybody knew how hard I worked. I never came in with my head um, held down, and I never made any excuses. I was accountable for every single one of those losses, and I think that's what people um, saw in, my, in me um, when, in those years that I had playing through baseball. You know, I never made excuses, and I was always willing to lose to go out fighting. Hmm. So BK brought it up, 14 teams. I, I got to ask. Do you play Immaculate Grid, and do you put yourself in when you're not sure of an answer? <laughs> I had about a week span where I played it, and I tried it, and um, I, I used myself a couple of times, but uh, <laughs> I played it I heard, I heard a person on Immaculate Grid. You know, somebody's like, man, it's, immaculate, it's an Immaculate Grid just for you. But, uh, you know, I've had a chance to live in a lot of different cities. Uh, it's been a great experience. I've been blessed to put on every jersey that I was able to wear. And, uh, you know, it was an opportunity that I'll never forget. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for the game of baseball, you know, um, allowing me to experience the experiences that I had. Edwin, great stuff, man. Great catching up with you. And uh, congratulations on that. Even I'd forgot, one nothing over Tampa. That's awesome. Edwin, thank you so much. Great having you on. All right, fellas, take it easy. See you, Brian. Right,